Hello friends, welcome back to the art room with Mr. Eck. Today we're going to be doing one of my favorite projects, and I gotta warn you, it's going to be a little messy. I call it Splatter Planet. Yes, we are going to be uh, kind of messing around with some splatter paint techniques. I'm going to show you a couple different ones, and we're going to do those techniques separately and then bring it together to make a really cool looking project. Um, this project is inspired by the work of Jackson Pollock. Let's look at one of his uh, pieces right now. Here's one of Jackson Pollock's most famous paintings. It's called Blue Poles. And as you can tell, he was a master of splatter paint. He would splatter, drip, uh, flick, like any, any method of getting paint on the canvas, he would try it. And he would do layers and layers of colors and do thick lines and thin lines and just made it look really, really interesting. Um, he's part of an art movement called Abstract Expressionism, which means he wasn't trying to paint anything realistic. He was just basically trying to express emotions, feelings, uh, through his painting. And he called his painting action painting um, because it was really a process. It was an action. It was like his painting wasn't just about a finished painting. It was also about making the painting. And so this is him... Uh, dripping some paint onto his canvas. He would use huge canvases, so he'd put them on the floor and he'd have to go all the way around it and he would drip and flick and spray and splatter the paint from different directions. Here's another one of him doing his action paintings. So our project today is uh, is loosely inspired by his work. So this project is going to be done in three parts, and part one is the background. So you're going to need a black piece of paper and some paint. In class, we'll be using our tempera paints. It doesn't really matter what kind of paint as long as you, if it's dry paint like this, then you just get wet it, get it wet, and then flick it. And then if you have um, wet paints, then they're already wet. Um, be sure you protect your area so you don't stain anything. Um, we're working on our art tables, which are very easy to clean up. So let me show you the technique that we're going to be using for our background right now. Alright, so this background is going to be outer space. So basically we just need a lot of stars. And if you really look at the night sky, stars aren't just white. There's a lot of different colors coming at us. So uh, while we're going to use a lot of white, we're also going to use some other colors. You need a uh, larger size paintbrush because we're going to be, be kind of flicking the bristles. So let me show you how to do that real quick. So I'm going to hold my paintbrush in my left hand, I'm going to point it down at the middle of my paper. I'm going to bend back the bristles like this, and then I'm going to let it go and it's going to shoot paint straight towards my paper like this. See that? I'm going to do that several times, always aiming towards the middle of the paper, but I'm going to change the direction we want kind of a starburst effect. And so then I'm going to turn my paper. Do that again. Always aiming towards the middle. See how it's already looking like a starburst? Because all the lines are coming from the center. <coughs> Now I'm going to rinse off my brush and get another color. You can use any color. Uh, you can even use black, I guess, because that would make like some, some spots in your night sky. But I'm more interested in like yellows, greens, blues, purples, uh, whites. So I'm going to do, see the, the color paper doesn't show up quite as well on color paper, the colored paint. Um, so. It does show up on the white paint though, so we're going to be going back and forth from different colors. I'm going to keep coming back to white and yellow because they're the brightest colors, but also mix in some other colors as well. It'll just make your art look more interesting. So I'm going to do the rest of this time lapse, and you can watch. All right, so that's it for step one of Splatter Planet. Just 
want to point out. It's okay that you have kind of a puddle of colors in the middle of your art because that's we're going to put a planet on top of that part. So what's really important is the, the, the spray of paint that goes out from the middle. That pool in the middle, that'll be fine. We're going to let this dry and then we will work on our planet next. That will be step two. So I will see y'all in just a few seconds. All right, welcome to step two of the Splatter Planet project. Uh, here is my dried background with my stars. See how pretty that, that is with all the different colors and um, it has that kind of starburst effect. Um, so here's what you're gonna need for step two because this is our background. Now we're gonna be working on our planet. We're gonna be uh, getting some nice uh, thick drawing paper that can take a little bit of paint. You're gonna need a pencil, um, some kind of a circle template to be uh, tracing out your circle for your planet, um, some water, and some kind of liquid paint. So uh, I'll get to the kind of paint in just a second. Let's go ahead and walk you through the steps of this project. All right, so first I'm going to trace my circle. There we go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're trying to replicate that kind of stripey, flowy look that a lot of planets have. Think of like pictures you've seen of, of uh, the planet Jupiter, where you've got like stripes of different colors, and, they, and sometimes they swirl. That's what we're looking for. So to do that, we're going to need some liquid paints, and we're not splattering this time. This is going to be more like a runny paint type uh, application. Um, before we do the paints, though, we need our our planet to be covered in water because if we put water on there and then we put paint on it, it's going to help it be more runny. So I've got some clean water, a clean paintbrush, at least I hope it's clean, and I'm going to just paint clear water all over my planet. Alright, so there we go. So I have, you can use, uh, if you're one of my at-home students, then you can use whatever uh, liquid paints you have. In class, I have a couple metallic paints. So I've got silver, gold, and bronze, and I think that's going to be really pretty. So we're going to do, we're going to use those metallic colors for our planet. So I'm just going to put a couple drops on there of each color. See how it's already kind of spreading because of that water? That's definitely going to help. And then a couple drops of silver. All right, so now I'm just going to pick up my paper and I'm going to let it run. I'm going to try to cover up all the area inside my circle with paint. Alright, so all the area inside my circle is now covered with paint and this little part coming off here and this part doesn't matter. We're going to cut this out after it dries. So this is this is uh, it for uh, the planet itself. So I'm going to set this off to dry and now that should just take you a few minutes. So now we've got another project to do that will come in to, uh, we'll, we'll add it all together at the end of uh, step three. Um, so, next, we want to add some kind of a spaceship to your artwork. And it could be a traditional UFO, it could be a famous ship that you're familiar with, like the Starship Enterprise, or the Millennium Falcon, or a Star Lord ship, the Milano from Guardians of the Galaxy, um, or just a classic rocket ship. I think that's what I'm going to do, because I like those classic rocket ships. So you're going to draw that here, we're going to color it with uh, markers, and uh, and then don't cut it out yet, we'll do that in uh, week three. So I'm going to do that real quick and then uh, we'll be done with step two and then in the last part of the video we'll put it all together.
Alright guys, so now we're on part three of Splatter Planet. We should have all the pieces assembled and today we're going to put them together. So first off, week one we did our background, our starry, starburst, outer space sky. Week two, or part two, however you're doing this, uh, we made our planet. As you can see, I can still see my pencil line, so I'll be able to cut that out. Um, if you can't see your pencil line, not a big deal. You just get that same lid, put it over an area that's completely covered with paint, and then uh, retrace it, and then cut it out. And then we also have our spaceship, rocket ship, UFO, whatever you drew. So um, now we're going to cut these out, and I'm going to show you how to place them on your background so that we show uh, space, distance, proportion, all those good things. So, um, I should explain that to you from the overhead camera so you can see what I'm talking about. Alright, so first, before we do any assembling, we've got to uh, cut these guys out. So, let's do that first. Alright, now that we've got our pieces cut out, we need to glue them onto our background. So I'm going to get a glue stick, put glue all over the back of my planet, and the planet needs to go right in the middle of your page, right over where the blob of paint kind of collected, right here. And it, it can be a little off-center, but basically in the middle of your page. I'm putting mine a little to the left of the middle because that's where most of the paint blobs ended up and that looks really cool I, already I think that's really neat now we're going to take it to the next level by adding our spaceship and uh, as you probably have realized when things are closer to you they're bigger right well if we put this side by side it's hard to say exactly how big that spaceship is but if you overlap it all of a sudden that's a big difference now we can tell that the spaceship is closer than the planet because what if you did something like this? If you put the spaceship behind the planet, then all of a sudden it's a huge spaceship because you could tell it's behind the planet. Um, and it should be very small if it were far away. So the spaceship needs to be somehow overlapping your planet. I'm going to do something like this, or maybe like this. I think it diagonal sounds good because that shows uh, diagonal lines add motion and movement to our artwork. So I'm going to glue that in place. Putting glue stick all over the back of my rocket. Let's put that in place where it's overlapping the planet. All right, I think that looks great. All right, now for a little extra surprise, um, we are going to be adding some uh, sparkly stars and other planets because I have a collection of beads and sequins, and you can put any of these you want to onto your background. Uh, some of them won't make sense. Like, let's find one. There, there's a, like a bead in here. If I try to stick this bead onto my background, it's not going to stay. If, at least I don't think so. It's more likely to fall off. So let's try to focus on the, the flat things. Like, well, there's, there's a heart. I guess you could have a heart planted if you wanted. Uh, but like the, the sequins like this. There we go. Um, so I'm going to put some of those in my background using liquid glue instead of glue stick so that way you can just do a little blob of glue and then stick your sequence on so I'm going to do that in time lapse and then we'll wrap it up And here's my finished Splatter Planet artwork. I think it turned out really cool. I think the, the sequins that we added at the very end really make it pop. Adds a lot of color and excitement to the whole piece. And I like the metallic paints on the planet. And I kind of like the sort of cartoony sci-fi rocket. And I like how it's clearly in front of my planet. So I'm showing space in outer space. Space as in the, the the area between objects, and also, if you'll notice, I put another, uh, I put a sequin underneath, 
kind of tucking out of my planet to also show more distance. So this is a planet that's behind this planet. So overlapping your objects in your artwork is a great way to show uh, space and distance um, while making a really cool artwork. So hope you guys have a blast making your splatter, splatter planets and I will see you guys next time in the art room.